Welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to show you guys all of the tools that I keep in my toolkit. So it's a little crowded and it might take a bit, but these are the things that I bring with me onto every job. Every time I walk onto a job, the first thing I bring in is this and my cordless tools. So I do like these kind of cases, the open ones. Um, they can get a little cluttered, but I like to be able to see what I have. So first off, let's just start going through what I have in here. I got a couple of caulking guns. I usually only have one, but right now I have one of the dripless ones and one of the heavy duty Tajima ones. These ones are great for thick materials and these ones are great for your regular, you know, latex caulking, painter's caulking. Also, I'm going to link everything that I can find in the description below if you're looking for any of it. And I'm also going to put that same link in the description of every carpentry based video if you want to find it later on. Okay, next I have one of these Stabila levels. I love this thing. I use it all the time. I like to take one of the rubber caps off so I can butt it up against the wall and I have no idea where it is because I'm never going to use it again. I always have some glue in my case. You know, you always need some glue. I carry a speed square at all times. I like the sort of sturdier ones. Some of them are thinner gauge. Some, some of them are a little bit thicker. I like the thicker ones. Always have a fat max tape measure. These are my preferred tape measures. I always have a drywall saw. I always have a crusty pair of gloves, sandy. I have this other square that a friend of mine got for me, and it's a good one. I don't use it all the time, but it's nice. Uh, probably can't find it. And he got it engraved for me. He said, you can't change the wind, but you can adjust your sail. And that's been true my whole life. You can't always change what is, but you can change how you react to it. I always have a block of wood that I use to wrap sandpaper around for smoothing stuff out nicely. And it's also good for, you know, if you need to hit something, instead of hitting it directly with the hammer, it sort of blunts the force or, or diffuses the force. Blunts. And as for a hammer, I have this short 20 ounce S-Twing. I have had this since the beginning of my career. I'm turning into my dad. I remember going through all my dad's tools, you know, like when you're a kid and you're looking for stuff and he's got his 20 year old S-Twings that are, you know, 30 year old S-Twings now. And now I'm that guy. I've got, you know, like a almost 15 year old S-Twing. But I really love this one. It's the smooth faced hammer. I just find, you know, I'm not usually framing or forming or doing anything I need a big hammer. I'm just nudging stuff into place. So a flat faced small hammer I find to be the best tool that I can keep in my uh, regular toolkit. I have a bunch of other hammers, but we're not getting into that. I always have a couple of quick grip clamps. These ones are getting due for replacement. The springs are getting a little loose. I always have a six inch putty knife. Believe it or not, I always have a laminate roller. Um, I use this a lot, you know, when laminating things or you just need something to roll something out. So surprisingly, I actually use this, but I've also installed quite a lot of plastic laminate. So, you know, that comes in handy for that, of course. Brush comb, always like to have one of those handy. A stubby multi-bit screwdriver, you gotta have those. Pickwick, local Vancouver company. I always have a bunch of scraps of sandpaper in here for whatever I need, you know, wrapping around that block. I also always have a file on hand. You never know when you're gonna need one, but when you do, you can't use anything else. And I always have concrete bits in here for some reason, mostly because they're in the wrong thing. But I always carry around 3 16 concrete bits for anchoring wood into concrete. So what you do is you use a duplex framing nail, three and a quarter framing nail. You drill a 3 16 hole in, you plunk a little piece of tie wire in that hole, like a little thin piece of metal. You pound the nail in, works great. We do that all the time in concrete form work. That's the primary method of fastening actually. I always have a drywall circle cutter because, you know, you use those all the time in renovations. A couple of nail bars. I've got the heavy duty steel one. I love these ones. They're uh, made in Japan, S-Wing one. I'm not sure if I can find those and link it. 
but I also always have this stiletto that believe it or not, somebody left on the job site and never came back for. So I would never buy one of these because I mean, this is like a hundred dollar nail bar, but it really does lighten up the tool belt. Channel locks, which I believe is the brand name. I think it's slip, slip lock or slip joint pliers. Um, I do a lot of small plumbing repairs when you're, you know, when you're a carpenter that happens a lot where you just need to do some small repair and you're not calling the plumber to do it. These come in handy all the time. They are also really good for removing brad nails out of baseboards. So when you rip a baseboard or a piece of trim off the wall, you got the brad nails sticking up. Because of the shape of it, you grab it and it rolls really nicely. So very handy for that too, among many other things, especially loosening plumbing things. That need a little help. Next, I always have a flat bar or two or three in here, the Glaziers bars. I've linked those before, I've talked about them in other videos. I love these things so much that I have three. And that's also because I lose them all the time and collect other people's, you know how it goes. Tradesmen tend to trade these. That's why we're called tradesmen. We trade each other's tools all the time when we're not looking. Okay, chisels. I keep a couple of chisels. I used to have three. I don't know where the third is. It was smaller, but I really like the ones with the metal tang on the back because you can really whale on them. So these are not my finishing chisels. These are the ones that get used for pry bars, for smashing anything and everything. I sharpen these with a belt sander when they need it. But for the most part, these are just to be reefed on and beat on. These are not my good chisels. Okay. Screwdrivers. Let's get into those. So, I always have a large flathead screwdriver, really handy to have on hand. You know, they make a great pry bar and you just never know when you're going to need one. And I didn't turn my phone on silent. Okay, we're back. Would you guys believe that that was actually a real human calling me, not a robo call? I saw a great meme. It was something to the effect of poetic justice on my generation. So the generation that grew up making prank phone calls is now terrorized by robocalls. Okay, so the only other two screwdrivers I have that aren't a multi-screwdriver is I have the next size down flathead and then the next size down flathead. Because I just, you know, I like to use a real solid screwdriver for a lot of things and I find flatheads are definitely handy to have solid, but you know, I don't have a lot of logic there. And the next one is the Klein multi the multi ones, like 14 in one. It does a whole bunch of different things, you know, between nut drivers and regular screwdrivers. I love this thing. I use it all the time. The only thing you don't want to do is ever lose a bit because it's not like easily replaceable bits. Well, maybe it is. I've just never lost a bit and had to replace it. But I love this thing. I think it's a really good screwdriver. Okay, screwdrivers, well let's segue on to electrical tools. I do very little electrical other than basically repairing an extension cord, but I always need to check to see if things are turned off. So I have one of these Klein Tools circuit tester thingies. I find this really handy. Maybe it saved my life. All I know is I haven't been electrocuted in a while. Knock on wood. Be quiet. I also like to carry a wire stripper in case I do actually need to do any very light electrical. But I will never be teaching you guys how to do anything on this channel because I don't know what I'm doing and teaching you that would be immoral and dangerous. Okay, what else do we have in here? Well, we've got small vice grips. I usually have big vice grips, but I've lost them somewhere. Always handy. And a small crescent wrench, just in case you need it in a tight space, like when you're removing a faucet or something. Sometimes you can't get a large crescent wrench up, you know, in behind the sink. So it's nice to have small ones from time to time too. And onto that, crescent wrenches. I also have one of these big Stanley Fat Max crescent wrenches. And I bought this one specifically back when I was doing form work, because this was one of the only ones that actually widens up really wide. Because sometimes when you're doing form work, you have those huge nuts going onto the threaded rod. And this was the only one that would fit some of the bigger ones. So I got this one to, you know, make my framing or make my forming tool belt really heavy. Okay, next, pliery businesses. Always got to have a pair of slip joint. I think that's what these are, the small slip joint ones. 
Somebody else will correct me and they'll get a lot of joy out of telling me what the right name is of something. That's sort of how the internet works. But yes, these are really handy. Sometimes you need these guys. And then needle nose. Again, sometimes you just need needle nose pliers. What have we got? End nippers is not the name, and that's not what I call them, but I can't remember. Guys, I don't remember the names of tools. I just use them. It's you tool dorks that remember the names of tools. I'm just a dude that uses them. And I'm not going to remember under pressure in the middle of videos right now. What are they? Uh, it's in the subtitles. I can't remember what these are called, but they're really handy and worth having. Next, of course, is a good old pair of lineman pliers that I like to rust and oil frequently because um, I like to have my tools out in the rain and then not do anything about them. But no, seriously, a good pair of lineman's pliers is really important. And this one even hasn't been snipped through any live wires, so it actually has full contact on the wire cutter part. That's awesome. But I think Klein's make a nice set of pliers. And I have right-handed and left-handed, um, oh no, this is middle. This isn't right-handed. This is the straight cut, and this is the left-handed cut. But tin snips. You gotta have tin snips, you guys. I got some twine and some shims for no good reason right there. Okay, knives. I always have a pack of blades, both sizes, and I always have knives, both sizes. Because sometimes you want a sturdy blade. I usually carry this around in my framing pouch. And it's also really good for cutting insulation, the nice long stiff blades. And I like these small ones because these are the ones I like to use to cut into drywall and then, and basically everything else. Like I don't like these big stiff blades for most jobs. I like the small ones. Next, I got one more pry bar thingy, whatever. I always have a couple putty knives. You know, I have a painting kit, I have a drywall kit, but I also always have putty knives in my regular tool kit. Okay, I also have a collection of Teflon tape for doing small plumbing repairs from every single time that I've ever had to go buy another roll of tape that I'll never use up. So I got three here and a roll of electrical tape. Never know when you're gonna need that to make a Band-Aid, you know, the tradesman Band-Aid. God forbid you actually carry some first aid stuff around. Moving on. Oh, such a good tool. The Gomboy, a foldable Japanese saw. So handy. Not for making fine cuts, but I use it all the time. Finishing cuts on stringers, rough cutting something when I'm say up on some scaffolding or a ladder and I don't have a saw handy, but I need to make a quick cut. Really good for that. It's also great for pulling through nails when it's brand new. Um, it's not, that's what I did to it, but it's still somehow survived for years on the same blade. So these Gomboy foldable saws, really good. Highly recommend them. They also aren't too big and they sit in your tool belt nicely. I always carry one of these little tubes of caulking because sometimes you can't get a caulking gun in behind something. So that's not uncommon that you've got some weird tight space on the baseboard where this just won't get in there. So having one of these squeeze tubes can be really handy. Same thing with the silicone squeeze tubes that I have right here. Sometimes you can't get behind the faucet. So I also have a tube of silicone squeeze tube. And a bunch of pencils. Here's a handy little tip. Guys, you can take a piece of PEX, flatten it a little bit, and you can use that as a pencil extender. And this does two things. Sometimes your pencils like to fall through the slot on your tool belt, maybe if it's got a hole in it. So this will hold it in there, but it will also extend the life of your pencils. So it's great for that. What else do we have in here? Ah, one of these tiny little squares. And I don't know what it's called. You guys can tell me what it's called, you bunch of nerds. Um, but I love having this, and I especially use the small one for marking where my miters are going to go on casings. That's the main thing I use it for, but it's indispensable for that. Okay, and last but not least, I've got a few punches and a cold chisel. So I've just got, you know some sizes of nail punches. You gotta have nail punches. You never know when you're gonna need them, but they're handy. And a cold chisel for busting out concrete when I don't feel like using one of my wood chisels for it. But no, seriously, yeah. Handy tool to have. But that's it. That is my whole carpentry tool bag. This video is probably really long 
and maybe you guys are still typing out all the correct names of all the tools I can't remember. Maybe if you spent your time actually using them instead of writing on the computer about them. Anyways, now I'm the judgy one. Okay, you guys, that's it. Um, hopefully I have some links to some good tools there. And um, if you want to support the channel, one of the really good ways is when you need a tool and you buy it through those links, it helps me out. So thanks for doing that to anyone who has. The most important thing you can do if you want to help out the channel is what you're already doing, watching the videos. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for the support, guys. Um, I'm going to go because this video is done. Uh, my arm's itchy and I have more videos to make. But it's all going to be okay because my arm doesn't itch anymore. And you're still a nerd because you know all the tool names. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.